Welcome back to the Elephant Lounge. I'm your host, Tuesday. I want to thank you so much for joining me again. And I have a bunch to talk about today, so let's get into it. I first have to talk about this Jonathan Jessica Yanov, this transgender woman. So it's male to female. Although it, this basically just consists, consists of a man putting on a wig and a dress. Actually, I don't even think he puts on a wig. He just puts on a dress and calls himself a woman. You may have heard about this story already, but he's going around in in Canada and he's visiting estheticians, beauticians, and asking for his genitals to be waxed. The problem is the people he's going to are not trained to deal with waxing male genitalia. They deal with female genitalia. And Jonathan or Jessica has it in their head that because they've put on a dress that they're a female and therefore everyone needs to service her, him, regardless of the the package that's going on downstairs. Doesn't seem to understand why this is an issue. So he has filed a total of 16 complaints with British Columbia's Human Rights Tribunal. And this is this quasi-judicial body created by the BC Human Rights Code. Yanov has said on Twitter, this is not about waxing. This is about businesses and individuals using their religion and culture to refuse service to protected groups because they don't agree with it or the person and use that to illegally discriminate contrary to the BC Human Rights Code and the CHRC. Now, I view this person as just being a gigantic troll. They have been around for quite some time, and their internet footprint is well known. As a matter of fact, some of his victims have come forward as of recent, stating that when they were 14 and 15 years old, Yanov was speaking with them in private messages, asking them about being in a change room, asking them about how many girls have their tits out and their vaginas, asking them very uncomfortable questions about having tampons, asking 10 to 12 year olds for tampons, asking whether they should help assist them in using said products, and if they should go into the stall with these young girls. Obviously, most people were pretty freaked out about this. It's just kind of one thing right after the next. And recently... We have LGBTQ activists demanding topless swim session for ages 12 plus, no parents allowed. So Lindsay Shepard, you may remember her. She's the TA, the teacher's assistant that played a film with Jordan Peterson in her classroom. And I believe she got fired. She lost her job because of it. I think it that was about two years ago. She writes an article here for the postmillennial.com. It says self-described LGBTQ2S+. They keep adding stuff. I don't know. Jessica Yanov was to present Monday night at Township of Langley Council on the need for an LGBTQ all bodies swim where no parents are present. However, the council voted to postpone Yanov's delegation until September. How nice of them. So this person wants them to host an all body swim and the attendees can be topless and at their leisure, of course, but they don't want any parents there. I just can't believe the Canadian government is going along with this. This is a giant troll, if you ask me. And quite frankly, I realize that there are transgender people out there who believe in seeing themselves as the opposite sex or they want everyone else to see them as that. I understand that. But in this case, I have a hard time believing that the majority of trans people don't understand that if they have the same genitalia and they have not altered that or changed that, why would they then demand that others 
service that when they're not trained to? Why would you want somebody to perform a service on you like that if they're not trained to do it? One of these places is going out of business. So this Yanov is going around actively putting people out of work, attacking people rather than just leaving people alone. You want to be left alone. You want to live your life the way you want to live your life. But for some reason, he doesn't want to let other people live their life the way they want to live their life. This to me just, I had to talk about it because it was insane. Absolutely insane. So let me know what you think. Is this, is this okay? It it seems like the majority of people that I have seen comment about this and talk about this, they seem to agree that something's wrong with this person. Either they are trolling or they're just a little off, whatever the case may be. I'm not exactly sure. But if you agree with Yanov, tell me why. Give us an argument. Present that because I'd love to hear it. As I said, I I believe that my opinion is in the majority. I believe it. I'm thinking that. I'm fairly confident. But this next topic, I don't think I'm going to be in the majority. I think I'm going to get a lot of crap for it. I Look, I get it. I understand. But I want to talk about it because there were a lot of parallels with this and and what I have been talking about with Michael Jackson, for instance. A lot of stuff going on. So let's talk about Vic Mignogna. So who is Vic Mignogna? If you're anything like me, you had no idea who the hell this person was. But apparently, he is a voice actor for anime, which is Japanese cartoons. He, I guess they dub it in English and then They have these actors, you know, voice out the characters, and there you go. And it's a big thing. It's thousands of people are fans of this type of entertainment, obviously. I mean, it's a lot bigger than I ever thought. These actors, they have a lot of fans, and Vic Mignogna is is very popular. He voices some fireball, I don't know, some character that's very popular. I apologize. I don't really know. And before we get too deep into this, I want to say my opinion of this, I'm certainly leaning toward one way. However, I want to make it clear that I I don't know for sure. I could be wrong. I don't know every aspect of this case. It's not like the Michael Jackson case, for instance, that I've been following for over 10 years. And I know a ton about. Same thing with like Amanda Knox. So I want to preface that. Um, You know, I could be wrong, but let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So he started getting accused of sexual harassment. I want to define the sexual harassment as it pertains to fans and toward his fellow workers, voice actors, staff members, things like that. A lot of sexual harassment can be very subtle. It can be a matter of just hugging inappropriately touching, uh, talking about things, bringing up topics that are uncomfortable for other people. There are a variety of ways to interpret that behavior. And I think for a lot of us, we've been in jobs where we work closely with people, or if you're an entertainer, especially being in theater, for instance, I've been around a lot of touchy-feely people. And sometimes some environments are a little bit more laxed than others. But ultimately, most workplaces have to work very hard about keeping their work environment safe and making sure everybody feels comfortable. It's not necessarily illegal to hug somebody or, you know, it, it, it's a thin line and it's different for all people. These accusations started coming out in mass online. People were going to Twitter. There was an investigation of some sort with Funimation, which is the company that I guess hired Vic or he was working for. As a result of their investigation, they ended up firing him. Now, the accusations come from fans, staff members that are found at these conventions. These types of people that are, that run these conventions, those are, those are people that have made complaints as well as fellow voice actors. And that's male and female. Uh, not that males have been, I, I should say males have been aware of, of what he's been doing. 
So he was fired. He was replaced. A lot of people side with Vic Manana. They don't believe that he's a bad person. They characterize him as a Christian, and they believe that after this recent project that he did at some major movie, that these people want his job. They want him out of the way. They're jealous of him. And that's why now all of a sudden all these accusations are coming out. A bunch of the fans decided that he should sue because a lot of these people were going on Twitter and they were saying all of these things. And obviously his fans don't believe it. They believe this is slander. And as a result of their slander, he was fired and he should recover damages. So one of the people involved in here is another YouTuber, Nick Ricada, who has a channel called Ricada Law. I'm actually a big fan. I like his stuff. I've been listening to him since he started doing the Maddox case. I really enjoy his commentary and the things that he has to say. He seems to be very convinced that Vic is a wonderful guy and he would never do any of these things. It was back in maybe January, February, when I had first heard about this story, I just kind of assumed, you know, look, all these people that I agree with and that I like, they all seem to say that, you know, this, they vouch for Vic, they've met him, they, etc., etc. You know the drill, okay? I didn't think anything of it. I believe I retweeted a few things and instantly kind of took their side, but I wasn't really following it because, as I said, anime is not... I mean, no disrespect. I mean, everybody's got a hobby. Everybody's got something that they like, but it's just not my cup of tea. So Nick Ricada is a lawyer. He's in Minnesota, but I believe he, I, I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but I believe he helped sort of organize this GoFundMe. He wanted to put this money together from the fans so that Nick or Vic Nick Vic, so that Vic could take that money and sue Funimation and some of these other voice actors that were tarnishing his character in the public eye. He found Vic a lawyer in Texas, and I believe his name is Ty Beard. So I could have some of these details wrong if I do let me know, but this is the best I've gotten out of it because it's only been about a few days that I've really, well, probably like a week now, I guess you could say that I I've really sort of trying to gather all these facts. And it, it's a little complicated. So Nick Ricada started doing depositions. And by that, I mean, he's analyzing the depositions. So Vic has sued this group of people, and they are now doing their depositions. And Nick got a hold of the video footage, and he's analyzing it and talking about it and how basically just analyzing everything that they're saying, which I find fascinating. And I love depositions because they they're a very loose forum and they have to answer the question and you can see their body language. The first person that was deposed was Ron Toy. Now, who is this? This person apparently is the fiance of Monica Rael. And Monica Rael is a voice actress that has worked with Vic Mignana for something like 15 years. When sexual harassment allegations started coming out on Twitter about Vic Mignana, she supported these victims and stated that she herself had an uncomfortable encounter with Vic Mignana. Her uncomfortable encounter occurred 12 years prior, which sounds a little crazy to a lot of us, but we'll get to that. Ron is not in animation, but he is obviously Monica's biggest fan. He participated in, I guess you could say, a Twitter mob. He's one of the people that rapidly posted all over Twitter talking about how awful Vic is and that Vic is a sexual predator. This is why he was included in the lawsuit. His deposition was horrible. I just want to say that right off. It was absolutely horrible. He was presented with a bunch of tweets that he made, okay? Over 300 tweets this guy made. He's asked about these tweets and every single one he says, I don't recall making it. I don't recall making it. 
At some point, I guess, they went to the judge and they had a hearing. He ended up having to verify that they were indeed his tweets. He just doesn't remember. He has no memory, which is so bizarre. It's so obvious that you're lying about that. How do you not remember all of those tweets? This is a huge thing. You're accusing somebody of sexual harassment. You're accusing somebody of doing all these horrible things, and you're going to act like you don't remember making any of these tweets. It was a joke. And the next deposition that I watched was Monica Rael, which was obviously his fiance. And she was one of the voice actresses who came out against Vic Mignogna. Again, this is why she was included in the lawsuit. And she had this story from 12 years ago. Apparently, she was at a convention with Vic Mignogna and she was with another, she was interested in another guy at the time. And they were flirting. Then she was also friends with Michelle. Michelle Spat, I guess is her name. Uh, Michelle was dating Vic at the time, and I believe they may have been engaged at this point. I'm not sure. I think they were just dating. Interestingly enough, she said that Vic invited her up to his room, hotel room, so that he proposed that they watch some video of his. And later, another person, Stan, I don't know his name. He's not a main character, but this this person, Stan, was going to also come up to the room later. So like she was aware that someone else was coming and she felt comfortable because Vic was dating her friend, Michelle. She didn't feel a threat, you know, because you think, well, you're going up to someone's hotel room, you know, what do you expect? That sort of thing. But obviously, I mean, it's happened. People can, friends can meet in hotel rooms. It happens. I certainly have met my friend in a hotel room and, you know, nothing happened. Happened. In any case, she's watching the show and Vic puts his hands on her, spins her around, kisses her, pushes her on the bed, gets on top of her. Uh, she says that she froze during this time because she has a past experience when she was 15 of being raped and she had tried to fight back and that did not work out for her. And so she was very frozen. And then this Stan came to the door. Everything stopped. She got out of there. Fine. Okay. That's her story. But I found her to be credible. I agree that it's a little bizarre to wait all this time, but I can understand where a woman might wait or not want to say anything. According to her, she felt that they were friends and that she was hoping this was an isolated incident and it wasn't until other people had come forward with their stories that she decided she was comfortable supporting them and coming forward with her story as well. The other thing to note here is that there were, I guess, some twins. I can't find much information about this, so if anybody knows where I can look, please let me know because apparently these twins lived with Ron and Monica and they were one of the people that came forward or these, the two of them came forward and kind of got this whole thing rolling saying that Vic had approached them with a proposition as it were. And they said no. And that was it. But obviously if they were working together, that's considered sexual harassment. They found that disgusting. And so I believe that was part of the investigation that Funimation had done. Like that was the initial start but I can't find much on that story. So if anyone knows, let me know. Now, then we have the deposition of Vic Mignogna himself. <sighs> I gotta say, guys, I was not impressed with him at all. I wasn't impressed with him at all. And I wanted to like him because obviously I'm listening to these other two and I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sold. As I said, with the Ron, he was awful. And while Monica's story seemed believable, it was hard to sort of accept that she held on to this story for 12 years. I understand why people wait, but it's still hard to get over. Like, why wouldn't you say anything to the 
employer later, or at least, I don't know, something. So Vic is deposed. He's answering a bunch of questions, and at first he seems pretty direct, but he's definitely a performer. He's definitely somebody who's putting on an act, putting on a show. I did not get the impression that he was a genuine person. He appeared to be on, as it were. He was kind of putting on his act. But that's the impression that I got. I don't know the guy. I don't know anything about him. This is just my first impression. At some point, he actually admits that he procured prostitutes or escorts at some time. And he made the claim that, well, this was eight or nine years before and I wasn't with Michelle. But that's not true. As a matter of fact, he was with Michelle from 2007 to 2018. So if he was seeing prostitutes or procuring prostitutes or escorts, then that would have definitely been during the time he was with Michelle. Now, I'm not trying to nitpick here, but it kind of is a big deal. Okay, it's a big deal for many reasons, and I'm going to get into it. But what we have to remember is that anything that Monica has said, or these other accusers of Vic Manana, all the people that are siding with Vic, they are very particular about everything. If they don't repeat verbatim what they've said before, well, then they must be lying. If there's any detail that they're off on, the Vic supporters jump all over them. But they don't seem to care when Vic makes these types of mistakes. They seem to gloss that all over. And Vic admits that, you know, okay, well, I did do some bad things. Then, during his deposition, he admits that he strayed from his relationship with Michelle a minimum of five times. Now, they didn't get to an exact number, but they got him to admit to straying five times, and he calls this a mistake. Now, forget everything else. Let's just focus on the two things that I just told you about his deposition. These are major red flags, and they are admitted by Vic himself. Number one, straying outside a a relationship with a woman that you're engaged to over five times is not a mistake. That's not a mistake. One time might be a mistake, might be a mistake. He didn't tell her. He was just going around doing this and he kept doing it. Five times is somebody who can't control themselves. Five times is somebody who doesn't even have enough respect for the woman he supposedly loves to at least just break up with her or be honest with her and let her know, hey, I cannot be a monogamous person. I can't deal with being in a monogamous relationship. Didn't even have the decency to do that. Instead, he's sleeping with other women who knows whether he's using protection or not. He's coming home with, you know, what quite possibly could be a disease. We don't know. Anytime you go outside of a relationship for sex, you put your partner at some sort of risk. He could have gotten somebody pregnant. He could have, there's a myriad of things that could have happened and it's disrespectful. And he presents himself as this Christian. They're persecuting me because I'm such a Christian. So if part of your reasoning for your lawsuit and your narrative is that you've been targeted by all these women coming forward and they're all lying and they're all disparaging your name. And part of the reason may be because you're a Christian. Well, then you sort of have to live the lifestyle of a Christian. I'm supposed to believe this man strayed five times outside of, or at least five times outside of his relationship. And nobody knew about this. Nobody knew that he was living a contradictory lifestyle. I'm just not sure that I'm buying that. And again, it goes back to just being a completely disrespectful person. So you're not only disrespecting the woman that you claim to love, you're disrespecting the women that you're engaging in affairs with, right? Because you're not giving them your your full attention. You're just with them for a small, short period of time. In addition to that, let's go back to the part about procuring a prostitute or 
an escort. Now, again, he says this was eight or nine years prior. The problem is he was with Michelle during this time. So when he tells the attorney, uh, when he's asked this question, were you with Michelle? He, you know, he says, no, this is before, this is before I was with Michelle. Actually, I believe that was a spontaneous utterance. I don't even think he was asked about that, if I remember correctly. But the, the point is, is that his timeline is wrong on that. And if you're going to nitpick about other people's testimonies, then you need to nitpick about Vic's testimony. But more than that, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that he did this before he was with Michelle, because regardless, there are certain types of people that visit escorts. Now, according to the research that I've done, it's about 10% of American males who visit prostitutes. I do know that there are a certain number of people that visit prostitutes. Maybe they're handicapped or they have, you know, some type of disability or something is going on with them where they are not um, appealing to some degree. It's very difficult for them to have a sexual relationship. They find some comfort and some ease in soliciting uh, prostitutes or escorts. And the other demographic that is known for visiting prostitutes are white, male, and very successful, which Vic would fall into that category. But another aspect of these men is a risk element and a deviancy. So these are people who are interested in taking risks. They do this because they don't view the consequences as being as stressful as not taking the risk, like they're, they're able to shut off any type of remorse or guilt that allows them to to continue with the activity. And there's also an interest in deviancy. There's some type of sexual deviancy that's going on. Um, this could be something like uh, bondage, things like that. So by Vic Mignogna's own testimony, it is very clear to me that he is, in fact, a sexual deviant. He engages in risk activities with ladies of the night, and he engages in risk activities to to go outside of his very, at one time, serious relationship. Now, his ex, they broke up in 2018, so it's basically recently, I believe they were together 12 years Clearly, she's upset by everything, but she does tend to believe these various accusations. So let's get into the accusations. Now, a lot of people are criticizing these women because they just don't think it's all that big of a deal. They don't believe that somebody who maybe hugs you or kisses you, that's not that big of a deal. Who cares? right? But if you investigate and look into this a little bit further, there are some disturbing images, videos of Vic with obviously underage girls. And I can't tell you how many stories I read where the poster, and yes, I realize it's on Twitter, it's on, you know, the internet. We can't just blindly trust these people. And I'm sure that some of them very well could be fake. People want attention. I understand that. But it was interesting to note the amount of people who would say something along the lines of, you know, I used to love Vic Mignogna. I was the biggest fan. I went to his con. I was so excited. I was 15, 14, and he gave me a big kiss, and I loved it. But now that I'm older, it, that, that was not okay. I'm really creeped out by the experience. So that's part of the reason why a lot of these people haven't come forward is because they were so young and they were infatuated with him. And at the time, they didn't see anything as being wrong. But now that they're older, they realize, okay, wait, that was not okay. And hopefully we all kind of remember when we were 14 and we were 15 and we all thought we knew everything. I mean, I would definitely be that girl that would think, you know, nothing's wrong. I can handle anything. Uh, a lot of girls feel that way when they're young because you just don't think you need to know anything more, 
right? (laughs) You really think to yourself, well, I don't, I know everything. I'm fine. And it's not until years later you look back and you are the age of, you know, the person that, you know, you're an adult. You've reached an age where you realize, oh, wait a minute, maybe that wasn't okay. So for a lot of these girls, it takes them a while to grow up and then they get to a particular age and they realize, wait a minute, that wasn't okay. I'm kind of creeped out about that. Well, that time is required for that person to realize what happened to them. What does this sound like? It sounds like what I have talked about before with the Michael Jackson case, when these little boys are little and they're being molested by their, you know, this, this person that they love and they admire, they don't register what happened to them at the time as being bad or wrong. It's not until years later when they get to be that age age the age of their abuser was at the time, or, you know, 20 years in some cases, most cases, I should say, where they realize, oh, wait a minute, that wasn't okay. And that is what seems to be going on here. Now, I haven't found any rape allegations. Who knows? But I have noticed that these allegations against Vic Mignogna appear to have been around for 15 years, as much as 15 years. And I did find a website, I believe it was about three years old, where people were complaining. It's the same thing. It's the same type of allegations. The other thing that is common and keeps coming up again and again and again is his abuse of staff members. So because he's a voice actor and a celebrity, he gets some type of treatment and he's assigned people at these conventions that assist him and help him. And Vic, it seems, according to these accounts and these these stories that I've read, they all have this belief that he is a prima donna. He's very abusive to people. He's very disrespectful to people. He shows up late to his panel or he, for instance, somebody will be having a panel before him and he will interrupt that person, um, or he will have his panel and he will go longer preventing the person that would come after him. It prevents them from having their panel on time, which is really selfish when you think about it. And quite frankly, when I watched Vic Mignogna during his deposition, none of this shocked me. It seems to be very consistent with the person that he portrays himself to be. And that is just my opinion. I think a lot of that just has to do with, look, I'm older. I'm older. I'm older than a lot of these fans. I think for many of these fans, they're young and they want to see the best in somebody and they believe he's a good person and maybe they met him at a convention once or twice, but they don't know him. And the problem that I'm having is it's not just other voice actors. Okay, when I asked Vic Mignogna fans why all these people would come out, I got told, well, one person told me to shut the f*** up, and another person said, well, it's jealousy. They're jealous of him. Monica's not the only voice actress, by the way. I guess there's a few others, but I haven't even gotten to all their stories, and I'm not going to get to all their stories here, but uh, the, the point is, I wanted to know why all these people came forward and they said it's jealousy, they need him out of the way, they want his job, he's a Christian, they're attacking him, they're SJWs. Um, I am no SJW, by the way, I just want to make that clear. I have no interest in being an SJW, but I, okay, you're, I, I guess... Why would you, aren't there other ways you can get rid of somebody besides accusing them of being a sexual predator or being a pedophile? That just doesn't seem right. And you see these videos of him whispering in people's ears and it's very uncomfortable. Uh, there's a, there's one video I watched where he's doing some kind of a, I think it looked like maybe a contest and there was like a five-year-old 
And he said, how old are you? And she said, five. And he said, oh, what are you doing later tonight? I mean, look, I guess that could be a joke. I mean, okay, I, I'm, I'm willing to accept some of these things as jokes and maybe not take them so seriously on one hand. But when you couple that with all this other information, no, it's very creepy. If you're going to say people are jealous of him, well, that might explain the voice actors. But how do you explain the staff? Okay, the people that work on these conventions and they see this inappropriate behavior and they've posted their testimony about what they've seen and how he's treated them and and apparently they had a, a, a code, Code Vic, which was to make sure a 19-year-old staff member didn't go near Vic. And not only that, but it turns out he was banned from other cons before this, before all this stuff came out. As I said, these stories have been around for, I guess, more than 15 years or 50, up to 15 years, somewhere around that time frame. I apologize. So what would a staff member at one of these cons have? Like, what's the jealousy there? They're not voice actors. They're not going to get his job. They don't need him out of the way. And then finally, you have all of these old fans, people that really liked him, really enjoyed him, and they just grew up and realized, ew, that was creepy. Now, let's get to the other side of the story very quickly. The truth of the matter is, uh, some of these people that are accusing him are not very credible, okay? They have their own problems. And we have to remember that none of us are perfect. I mean, nobody's perfect. It doesn't mean that Vic is innocent, but he does have a lawsuit. He does have some legal ground to stand on. Because the fact of the matter is, unless they have uh, something more substantial, they have to show why they fired him. They have to show some more proof. I feel a lot of this has been proven. But then again, look, there are problems in some of their stories. One girl said Vic danced with her, grabbed her tightly, came on to her, made her feel uncomfortable. But there is video showing this supposed dance and it looks more like she went up to him and she was very much interested and enjoying herself with Vic Mignogna. It showed quite the opposite. And then you have some of these encounters with Vic. He admits that they happened. He admits that, yes, I was with them. Yes, but it was consensual. And then we stopped and we didn't do this. And that in itself lends to his credibility because he could very well easily say, no, that didn't happen at all. But he does admit something, okay? He has apologized. He has said, I'm very sorry if I made anyone feel uncomfortable. So maybe it's possible he doesn't really understand how he comes across to people. That's always a possibility. Ultimately, a lot of this lawsuit so far, if you go over to Nick Ricada, he is breaking everything down. And it does look like a lot of what they have said is ultimately hearsay. And it doesn't look good that, for instance, Monica waited 12 years years to tell her story because she was an adult at the time. She wasn't a 16 year old. She wasn't 15, something like that. That I can really understand. When you're a kid, you don't want to say anything. Of course, you don't want to say anything to your parents either because then your parents will never let you go to a convention again. But someone like Monica, she was an adult. She would have been 30 or, you know, somewhere around there. So there's really no excuse for her not to say anything, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe not. I can understand, but I think a jury might have a hard time understanding that. I know a jury's going to have a hard time believing in that Ron guy because he was awful. His deposition was terrible, you guys. You can't just go to a deposition and deny every tweet you made when it's so obvious that you you do remember you spent months on Twitter posting this garbage. And whether you believed it's true or not, you should have just admitted, yeah, those are my tweets. So ultimately, look, I, I'm not sure I'm necessarily correct. I could very well be wrong. But 
at this point in time and the information that I've seen and putting everything all together and looking at things from the full picture, I absolutely believe this guy is indeed somebody who behaves like a predator. And while he's not a rapist, he is looking to see how far he can get with people. And he's probably been quite successful over the years. And when he messes up, he knows people are going to cover for him and he knows he's going to have that support. And this time around, things have caught up with him. However, it is also very possible that he will prevail in this lawsuit because of all the circumstances and the fact that there's a lot of hearsay. It's very hard to get evidence. He does, in fact, have a fairly good case. He has a good lawyer, so he may very well end up winning. Doesn't mean he's innocent, does not mean he's innocent at all. So let me know what you think of this fiasco. I know it's long, but it's there's a lot of detail to this, and I wanted to give it as much detail as I could, but I do admit that there's, there's more to it. I will link Nick's channel, I believe, He does a very good job at explaining what I would call the other side or Vic's side. You should always get the best information you can. And I feel he does a really good job at giving the the best information. I haven't seen too many people making videos that are against Vic. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this podcast and I wanted to talk about it because nobody's talking about it from the other side. There's people that are writing stuff online, but I don't know. If somebody knows somebody that's talking about it from the other side, let me know because I want to listen because they probably know a lot more than I do. And I will be back. <laughs>